What up guys, how's it going? This video is a continuation to my previous video, the derivation of the AD curve. Today I'm going to show you guys um, the shifting of the AD curve. And then first of all, I'm going to talk about the physical expansion and how this physical expansion can cause a shift in your AD curve. And then for physical expansion, we are assuming that the P is constant. And then the later part, I'm going to talk about how it increase in H2, which is the slope of your ISLM, H1 over H2. How increase in H2 can affect the extent of your AD shift. Okay, right here, I already have your ISLM diagram and your ADS diagram, AD diagram to be in fact, because we don't have our AS over here. So at this initial equilibrium point A, we have our output level of Y1 and interest rate level of I1. We have prices P1 and Y1 here. So we know that a fiscal expansion is going to cause a um, a rightward shift for IS. And then under this assumption, we're gonna use a that the government is using a budget, uh, is running a budget, uh, balanced budget policy, where rise in government spending finance by taxes. And then we know that because of the multiplier, the autonomous the autonomous component of your IS function is going to increase and then your in this case your IS is going to shift right well, I'm going to use blue ink in case you guys can see it an increase in IS so you have a new equilibrium B and here you experience a increase in interest rate and I increase in output and then here we know that um, the prices level stay the same which I had said earlier that the P is constant so having this you go all the way, you know that the AD curve shift right. D1, AD2, and then this is your new equilibrium of uh, point B. This is basically how a fiscal expansion can cause a shift in AD because we know that your AD. It comprises of um, consumption plus investment plus government spending and your net export. And then secondly, I'm going to cover how a increase in H2 will actually affect the distance of your AD shift. As we know, an increase in H2 the slope of IM is H1 over H2 and then an increase in H2 is going to cause your IM I mean sorry um, your LM to be um, flatter so in this case I'm going to draw a flatter LM everything stays the same so under a fiscal expansion, you're going to have a new point. Instead of at B, you will now reach this new point indicated by this B hyphen. The diagram is pretty messy, I'm sorry for that. But as you guys can see, there is actually a smaller crowding out effect as compared to a steeper 
LM because the crowding out effect is from here to here and then with this increase in H2 it's going to cause a flatter LM and then actually there's a smaller crowding out effect over here and then your Y increases from Y1 all the way to Y3 it is actually bigger than the initial um, shift indicated by this so that's actually a smaller crowding out effect and then from here we know that at the same output level we're gonna have a even larger shift for the AD so at the same price level we're gonna have a even more outward shift for the AD all the way here there we go AD3 So in conclusion, um, the shift of the LM, it can actually affect the, the extent of the shift, whether it is lesser or is it more. That's pretty much how your AD responds to a fiscal, fiscal expansion or contraction. But we know that um, for your LM, uh, increase and in, decrease in your money supply, the shift of the LM is going to affect the shift of the AD too. But I'm not going to cover in this video. But you guys can play around with it on your own. Thank you.